I completely forgot to bring mine. They were all looking suspiciously assaulted. Another member, please. Hi guys, today I thought I would just discuss about cases that I've seen today. So today I did a visiting day. Uh, normally every Tuesday that's what we do. In the morning I went and I had a discussion with uh, my supervisor and we discussed about my e-portfolio briefly and we just had a look quickly and see what we needed to do in preparation for our six month review and then we had a brief tutorial and today's tutorial was about skin rashes. So so my GP is a GPSI and he kind of specializes in skin for GP so today we discuss about skin rashes kind of like common skin rashes that are commonly seen in the general practice and then that lasted about uh, one hour and normally I would go out for a visit so I visited two homes in the morning the first home was an elderly lady who had three days history of cough which is uh, with green phlegm and a bit breathless i think she had similar presentation the month before and was prescribed antibiotic but she didn't take it and she got well but uh, this time she again had um, cough but she couldn't collect the prescription because obviously prescription has expired so she rang the gp she actually had three days history of cough with white phlegm and it's a bit better today with a bit of breathlessness and wheezing yesterday but improved today she also had increased a leg swelling for the past few days she has extensive history of cardiac problem on examination she was alert smiling very bright there was no evidence that she was clinically unwell uh, there was a bilateral cackles both sides up to upper zones and she does have bilateral pedal edema up to below knee Claire gives a five days course of amoxicillin and just two weeks course of rosemite so in this case what happened was I completely forgot to bring my doctor's bag because what happened was over the weekend I did out of hours night shift and I put my bag in the other car so I forgot about it so when I reached the first patient's home I had no equipment apart from my stethoscope obviously you know pulse a respiratory rate we can do manual but unfortunately blood pressure and temperature thermometer uh, we can't do that manually uh, thankfully she had her own blood pressure machine so what I did was after the first home visit I had to go back to the practice borrowed the kit from my supervisor who's currently having a management meeting and then went on the second home visit because I didn't want to go to the home visit without all this stuff so the second case was an elderly lady who lives alone at a warden control bungalow uh, if you don't know what a warden control bungalow is basically it's a kind of accommodation for all all these elderly people which have a warden come and check check them out so this option allows the elderly patient to live in their own home being independent but at the same time safe as well so this patient was recently discharged from the hospital for fall and UTI she also fractured her right shoulder I actually sent her in the first time she had two days history of diarrhea and feeling nausea just constantly retching and also having like generalized abdominal discomfort she had a history of both of her grandsons is currently having gastroenteritis and they actually visited her home basically she probably has gastroenteritis and I just advise her to take paracetamol encourage all her fluid and then the afternoon we had a look there was more visits put, being put on the list and there was also one patient who died who I reviewed last week which was a palliative patient I think he had yes he had bowel cancer which was metastatic and he couldn't tolerate chemotherapy actually he passed away three days later after I've seen him so uh, that was unexpected I mean it was expected but I thought he would have a bit longer but obviously in these cases you can't really be sure so he he obviously deteriorated quite quickly what happened was even though I discussed about resuscitation I asked the family whether they had the red form they said yeah but actually he didn't have the do not resuscitate form so the nurses had to ring the the GP out of hours to put this in place so that was my mistake because I should have made sure that the form was in place the GP out of hours had to come out and do the do not resuscitate uh, form feel very sorry because obviously it's my fault he needed death certificate so patient who died over the weekend normally the GPR of hours will verify the, the death and then the death certificate needs to be completed by anybody who's seen 
them last. So, and then we did home visit. So the first home visit was a palliative patient again, bladder cancer, which is metastatic. He was very unwell. He was bleeding from his catheter. He also had CLL. We reviewed his pain and we gave him some hormone, reviewed what he needs. So he needed some equipment to help him get up on the bed, like a mode, bed handle, I guess. Basically, he already lives in a bungalow. So he's all set up, the bedrooms downstairs. So this is kind of still again, palliative review of patient and making sure that all the equipment are going to be set up so we rang the crisis intervention team the second patient that we saw well second and third actually we saw a patient in the, this kind of a psychiatric hospital in the community so this is my first time visiting a psychiatric hospital in the community i've never been here before i didn't know that it exists so it kind of like a psychiatric hospital it's all locked so these people unwell with their psychiatric problem but obviously they can't stay in the hospital they receive the psychiatric treatment for a certain period of time in the hospital and then afterwards they have to move to a psychiatric hospital but in the community so I guess this hospital kind of place like this and it's separate there's male hospital and some female it's a bit scary I think last time I when I had like psychiatric rotation was during medical school so like a good 10 15 years ago very long time so when i went there like they were all looking suspiciously i mean obviously they had psychiatric problems and they were like shouting at us so that was an experience and i guess something to learn so the first psychiatric patient had problem with her bowels so we had to look at her she hasn't opened her bowels for three weeks but she's passing platers she's feeling sick and being sick she's not keen to go into the hospital again she also had a bit of chest problems as well and then the second psychiatric patient was infection out of the skin she had claritromycin and then she had clindamycin for about six days the wound is all dried advise some dressing and continue and complete the clindamycin it's not really easy to uh, assess psychiatric patient because they are also unwell from their psychiatric side but we have to assess from the medical side and then the last patient was when the staff were asking us to section her so basically if a patient is under psychotic so there's mental health act there's normally a few sections so section two where you can section patient for 28 days so that we can assess them in the hospital and it needs to be one like the yeah, normal doctor either like GP and discuss with psychiatric social worker and then the other one is section 3 where patient can be admitted for six months under section to receive treatment so for this case they wanted us to section her because they wanted her to be sectioned to receive treatment apparently she's been aggressive she lives in the psychiatric place which is not psychiatric hospital but it is a psychiatric community nursing home so basically when the psychiatric patients they get older and they're actually well but they needed like a bit of supervised placement so i guess they come here uh, this is my first time visiting all this place i didn't even know th these places exist so it was quite interesting i mean the patients in this psychiatric nursing home they are quite young they're in their 50s so they can go out have a cigarette they can go out to the town center but they just have to tell when they're coming back so with this first time sectioning patient i've never actually observed this before i've only learned it in textbook so it's my first time experiencing this so what we did to us we had a chat with the nurse looking after her we went through all the incident notes and then we had a chat with her it was quite a long chat about half an hour but at the end of the chat she's not really psychotic she had an insight she wants to have treatment and she's willing to stay so she wants to get better we can't really see any psychotic features obviously this incident happened where she assaulted another member of the at the nursing home and also assaulted staff so basically what we planned was to repeat blood tests making sure there's and no like medical reason why she's acting this way and have a chat with the psychiatric mental health nurse i mean the first time she was sectioned so she was sectioned in may for six months and obviously it expired in november at that time the notes she was clearly psychotic at that time she was delusional having hallucinations but at this point she doesn't appear to have those things so obviously a longer term of observations needed we need the psychiatrist to see her the psychiatrist was self-isolating at the moment which is why we had to go and see her at this point it doesn't seem like urgent that we need her to be sectioned i learned more about the application of the mental health act 
and it is so important to go through because it is a legal procedure we need to make sure that when we put a section in place that it's really appropriate because like section 2 lasts for 28 days kind of like means they are being locked in like the psychiatric center so we have to make sure that each decision that we make is appropriate and needed at that time so hopefully this will help you just to see what kind of cases come out during home visit if you want to have a look at my other GP videos this is about how to get into GP training and this is my vlog of the day um, just to have a look at what a day in the GP registrar looks like and see you later in the next video bye